Hello. So this is Cardiac Surgery Patient Pre-Op Booklet, Part 2, All of the Tubes. First we have the endotracheal tube. When you awaken after surgery, you will feel the breathing tube that is inserted in your mouth and through your windpipe. This tube is called an endotracheal tube and is attached to a ventilator, a large machine that breathes for you during and immediately after surgery. The tube passes between your vocal cords, so you won't be able to speak with the tube in place. Your nurse will help you communicate with hand and head gestures. This tube may make you feel as if you need to cough or gag. It is important to try to relax so the machine can breathe for you. As you become more awake and able to breathe on your own, the tube will be removed. The length of the time varies for each patient. Once the tube is removed, you'll be given oxygen either by a face mask or through two soft tubes called nasal prongs, which lie in your nose. Before your surgery, you were shown how to use a device called an inceptor spirometer. After the ET tube is removed, it is very important that you breathe deeply, cough, and use spirometer. The spirometer as directed by your nurse. These exercises are important to fully expand your lungs and prevent ammonia. Your incentive spirometer is a tool that will help keep your lungs healthy after surgery. Surgery and anesthesia can lead to less activity in the lungs, which can put you at risk for pneumonia. The incentive spirometer helps to protect you by expanding and exercising your lung capacity. You will use this tool regularly while in the hospital after surgery, and we want you to practice using it at home in preparation for your visit. The incentive spirometer has a mouthpiece, a main chamber with a piston, and a goal marker to show your progress. It also has a flow indicator to help you inhale at the correct rate. To use the incentive spirometer, sit up as far as you can in bed on the edge of your bed or in a chair. Hold the incentive spirometer upright with the good, better, best label facing you. Exhale fully before you begin. Place the mouthpiece in your mouth and seal your lips tightly around it. Breathe in as slowly and deeply as possible. This will raise the piston in the main chamber. Try to keep the flow indicator in the better or best position throughout your entire breath. The marker tab shows you the target that your doctor wants you to raise the piston to each time you use your incentive spirometer. At the end of your inhalation, hold your breath for at least five seconds, allowing the piston to fall back to zero. Take your time and slow down if you begin to feel lightheaded. Now, see if you can do it yourself. Sit up straight on the bed or chair, exhale fully, seal your lips around the mouthpiece, and then breathe in as slowly and deeply as possible. Don't forget to hold your breath for at least five seconds to allow the piston to fall back to zero. You will repeat this 10 times at each practice session. Always remember to sit up straight, inhale slowly and deeply, keep the flow indicator in the better or best position, slow down if you feel lightheaded. Try practicing at home to get your lungs ready for surgery and help prevent pneumonia. We recommend that you use your incentive spirometer four times a day. Inhale 10 times each practice session. If it helps you remember, you can practice using your incentive spirometer before each meal and then again right before bedtime. Okay, so next we have the nasogastric or, or orogastric tube. A tube is inserted through your nose or mouth, down the back of your throat, and into your stomach. This tube is called nasogastric tube, and it helps keep your stomach free from excess stomach fluids during and immediately after surgery. This stomach tube may make your, no, your nostrils um, tickle or your mouth and throat feel dry. It may make it difficult for you to swallow. This tube is removed at the same time as the ET tube. 
Ice strips are usually allowed after the tube is removed. As your stomach begins to wake up from surgery, sips of clear liquid such as water or ginger ale will be allowed. Next we have the medial astinal tubes. I don't know if I said that right. After surgery, you will have soft plastic tubes called medial mediastinal tubes inserted just below your breastbone. These chest tubes are connected to a container below your bed that collects fluids draining from your heart after surgery. You may feel tugging on your skin where the tubes ex um, exit your chest. Because of the location of the chest tubes and the tape used to secure them, you will find it harder to move around than you would normally would. For some patients, the tubes can cause discomfort around the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Pain medication helps ease discomfort associated with these tubes. They are usually removed a day or two after surgery. The removal process may cause some brief discomfort, but you will receive pain medications to lessen this. Excuse me. So next we have pacer wires. You may have two pair of small wires that are attached to your heart to allow for temporary electronical, electrical pacing of your heart if needed. These wires are removed before you go home. Intravenous line. You will have several IVs in place. One line will be used for any medicines, fluids, or blood that you may need. Another line will be help your nurse and doctor monitor your heart's functions. A third line is inserted in your wrist and will give a constant readout of your blood pressure. Blood may be taken for lab tests from this IV, saving you from needle sticks to obtain blood samples. Urinary catheter, also called a fo Foley catheter. This temporary small tube is placed into your bladder and is connected to a drainage bag. This allows hourly monitoring of your urine output, which is important after surgery. The catheter is in place as long as needed and then removed to help prevent infection. Cardiac monitor. This machine is at the head of your bed and monitors your heart rate and rhythm as well as your blood pressure. These monitors have alarms that alert staff to changes in your blood pressure and heart rhythm. Such changes are common after heart surgery and are not necessarily cause for alarm or concern. Pain medication and your incision. Some pain or discomfort is to be expected for a short time after your operation. Pain tolerance is widely variable. Some patients report a little pain while others feel more. Your nurse will do everything possible to see that you are comfortable. It is important that you communicate with your nurse so that your pain medication can be adjusted as needed. Dressings. There will be a dressing or bandage over, the over your chest incision. If you have bypass surgery, there will be a dressing on your leg if a vein was taken. To decrease the risk of blood clots, while you are not active, you will wear supportive stockings. Fluids and diet. You cannot drink anything until your breathing tube is removed. After your breathing tube and stomach tube are re both removed, you may begin to drink clear liquids until you feel you are ready to move to solid foods. This may be in the middle of the second day, if not sooner. You may find that your mouth is very dry after the breathing tube is removed. A slight sore throat is not uncommon. This could last a few days. Transferring to inpatient cardiac unit. When you are ready to leave the CCU, you will, you will transfer to inpatient cardiac unit. While in this unit, you will be monitored by telemetry, which consists of a small transmitter worn in the pocket of your hospital gown. This sends information about your heart rate and rhythm to the nurse's station. You will be instructed on where you can walk on the unit so that you do not get out of range of the monitoring system. The nurses will assist you with a progressive daily walking program. You may have to push yourself in the first days of your surgery, but your participation in activities is a very important part of your recovery. You will also be expected to shower every day as this helps healing of your incision. During your stay on the inpatient cardiac unit, 
A cardiac nurse will help you prepare for returning home to a full life. You will be involved in an exercise and educational program under the guidance of your doctor. Your length of stay will depend on your progress and your doctor's recommendations. Most patients are ready to leave the hospital within four to five days.